This talk is about EEG display. It is intended for the Clinical Neurophysiology Fellows at Niklaus Children's Hospital. It will be conducted in a question and answer format. The first question is, high resolution digital recording have better definition than analog recording. A true, B false. This is the model of an old EEG machine. They were analog machines with continuous data recording translated to paper by an oscillographic pen writer device. This is the model of a new EEG machine. The new EEG machines are digital. They collect data points intermittently from the analog signal generated by the brain electrical activity and reproduce it by reconstructing the activity in the form of continuous wave in the computer screen. So when it comes to wave definition, continuous better than intermittent, analog better than digital. So the answer to this question is false. Next question, which of the following elements is not involved in the process of producing an EEG epoch in the computer screen? A, high frequency analog filter, B, analog to digital converter, C, discrete to continuous converter, D, low frequency analog filter. The process of electrical brain wave registration in the computer screen starts with anti-aliasing filter. This filter is an analog high frequency filter, usually with a cutoff of 100 Hz, solidly built in the machine by the manufacturer. From the anti-aliasing filter, the analog activity goes to the analog to digital converter. In the analog to digital converter, the incoming analog signal is transformed into numerical values. This is done by intermittently capturing samples from the analog signal at specific intervals and assigning them a binary number. The rate at which the samples are gathered is called the sampling rate. The interval between the samples is called the sampling interval. The sampling interval is the reciprocal of the sampling rate. From the analog to the digital converter, the data now consisting of binary numbers is passed on to the computer. The computer has many components, including high and low mathematical filters and a discrete to continuous converter. Ultimately, the computer sends addresses to the screen matrix with two types of information. One type of information arises directly from the processing of data points gathered by the analog to digital converter. The second type of information is generated by the discrete to continuous converter using a zero hold interpolation function. At the screen matrix, these addresses induce activation of the appropriate pixels. A pixel is a minute area of illumination on a display screen that by flickering its luminous elements at different rates can generate different colors. So the answer to this question is D. Next question. What is the minimum sampling rate required to be able to reconstruct a 33 hertz wave with high fidelity? A, 100, B, 200, C, 150, D, 500. The sampling rate 
is a function of the analog to digital converter. The minimum required sampling rate consists of the lowest sampling rate required to gather enough data to be able to reconstruct the highest frequency present in a wave without ali aliasing it. From the clinical point of view, the minimal required sampling rate is the lowest sampling rate required to later be able to accurately reconstruct the highest frequency wave that we desire to see. A famous theorem called Nyquist theorem states that the intermittent gathering of data points, if done at a rate of twice the highest frequency found in a wave, will allow us to reconstruct the original wave with high fidelity. This is not true, but you must remember it because it is often used during explanations about waves and because questions about it are often asked during your exam. What is true is that the collecting the data at a rate of six or more times the highest desirable wave frequency and reproducing it accordingly will produce a wave with very similar qualities as the one that would be obtained by continuous recording using an analog equipment. I will explain this concept visually in the next few frames. In this frame, I have represented five one second epochs of brain activity. Some of these epochs have well-defined waves as the one I am pointing here with a duration of 125 milliseconds. Here with a duration of 250 milliseconds and here with a duration of 30 milliseconds. I have pointed these waves to show you the effect of sampling rate upon them. Sampling rate is usually given in seconds and its importance relates to the minimal required sampling rate which is given in Hertz and can be calculated based on the Nyquist number or using the time 6 rule. The result of these calculations are very different as we will see in the next few minutes. I have added a new row with the same EEG epochs to show you the effect of sampling rate at five samples per second. I will do so by introducing magenta points to indicate the precise time of the sampling. Consider that only the information corresponding to the location of these sampling points will be transferred to the computer for further processing. Thus, sampling at five samples per second can be predicted based on Nyquist's number to allow the accurate reconstruction of waves of 2.5 Hz or slower. Using the time 6 rule, a sampling rate of 5 per second can be predicted to allow accurate reconstruction of waves of only 0 0.8 Hz or slower. An analog to digital converter with a capacity of collecting 10 data points per second following Nyquist's number would produce or provide sufficient information to fairly reconstruct a 200 millisecond wave. But following the time 6 rule would only predict to be able to reconstruct a wave lasting 625 milliseconds or longer. Using a sampling rate of 20 per second, we could predict that we would be able to accurately reconstruct waves of 100 milliseconds or longer using Nyquist's number and we would predict following that time 6 rule that accurate reproduction of wave will only be possible for waves 
of 303 milliseconds or slower. Using a sampling rate of 100 per second, according to Nyquist, we would be able to reconstruct a wave of 50 hertz or slower, but following the time 6 rule, we would be able to reconstruct only those waves lasting 60 milliseconds or longer. Finally, using an analog to data converter able to sample at a rate of 200 per second, which I have only represented in this frame with magenta points, we would be able to reconstruct a wave with a frequency of 10 milliseconds or more using Nyquist's number or using the time 6 rule will be able to reconstruct wave of about 30 milliseconds or more. Calculating wave reconstruction based on sample per second using the time 6 rule provides ample data to allow high frequency reproduction. If the reproduction is done at the same rate. So the answer to this question is B. Next question. The American Clinical Neurophysiology Society recommends a minimum sampling rate of more than dash times the high frequency filter setting A2, B3, C5, D6. The American Clinical Neurophysiology Society recommends a minimum sampling rate of more than three times the high frequency filter setting. So if we are using a 70 Hz high frequency filter, the analog to digital converter should have a sampling rate of at least 210. The recommended number by the Academy is 256 samples per second. So the answer to this question is B. Next question. Analog to data converter under sampling will dash at the time of reconstruction. A. Transform fast waves into slower waves. B consistently reduce the amplitude of the waves, C, prevent aliasing, D, transform slow waves into faster waves. You have just seen this figure when I was answering the prior question. If we take the 250 millisecond wave that corresponds to a 4 Hz activity, and would reconstruct it using a discrete to continuous converter with a linear function, the resulting wave would be slower and shorter. The slowing of a wave based on undersampling will always occur, whereas the decrease in amplitude may or may not occur. The conversion of faster waves into a slower wave value due to undersampling, as we know, is called aliasing. Using a sampling rate of 100, we will avoid this problem. This is called oversampling, which is what is recommended by the Academy. So the answer to this question is A. Next question. Most EEG machines in current use have analog to digital converter with sampling rates of dash hertz A90, B100, C30, D256. Most analog to data converters have a sampling rate of 256 samples per second. Some take as many as 512 samples per second. 
So the answer to this question is D. Next question. The American Clinical Neurophysiology Society recommends a resolution of at least dash bits per sample, including any sign bits. A8, B11, C14, D16. The number of recommended bits per sample is 16. E.g. Analog to digital converters should have vertical resolution of at least 16 bits per sample, preferably 24 bits per sample. E.g. Analog to digital converters have a voltage range of about 10 volts, that is after amplification. So the answer to this question is D. Next question. A 16-bit analog to data converter with a dynamic range of plus or minus 1.638 millivolts would be able to resolve AG down to dash microvolts. A 0.2, B 0.02, C 0.05, D 0.16. A 16-bit analog to data converter samples at a rate of 65,536 times per second. Working with a dynamic range of more or less 1,638 microvolts, which actually consists of 3,000 276 levels when this number is divided by the bits corresponding to the analog digital converter the result is 0 0.049 microvolts which corresponds to about 0 0.05 microvolts thus with this parameter computer is able to gather data that would allow to resolve AG amplitudes down to 0 0.05 microvolts. So the answer to this question is C. Next question. The discrete to continuous converter used in most AEG machines places the amplitude value in the Y axis corresponding to the time axis and then interpolates signal waveform values in between the sequences value using a zero order hold interpolation function. A true, B false. I'd like to start answering this question by showing you this single EEG derivation. As you can see, the EEG wave in the computer screen are not represented as discrete dots as you would expect when you think of the workings of the analog to digital converter. Instead, the EEG waves in the computer screen are represented as continuous lines. This is achieved thanks to a device embedded in the computer to which we have alluded before. This device is called the continuous to discrete converter. In this frame, I have selected a small segment of EEG. I have enlarged it so that we can see the tracing better. And as you can see, the EEG waves are made of single lines. Notice that the width of the lines in the x-axis representing time domain is the same. This is so because time is represented at an unchanging sequence of a fixed duration and regular interval. Contrast this with the different length 
of the y-axis or amplitude domain. Stretching this segment allows us to see the relation between the spaces between the two green lines and the width of the black lines. Notice that the space between the green lines correspond to 200 milliseconds and occupy 18 centimeters. Whereas the black lines occupy 0.9 centimeters corresponding to 10 milliseconds. This brings about two questions. How does this line come about? And the second question is what is the zero order hold interpolation function? I will try to answer these questions as best as I can. You can see here a line with waves of different amplitudes and frequencies. The analog to data converter will sample at different times with fixed intervals. Notice that the space between the T's, that is the space between the gray bars, are always the same. whereas the amplitude level in the y-axis signal by the end of the gray bar in relation to the baseline are of different sizes in most situations. I'd like to stress that what we are looking at is a representation of the analog signal from the brain as it is being digitalized by converting it into a binary number. So, analog signal comes to the analog data converter. Binary numbers reflecting the amplitude at discrete intervals will come out, which is what we have just represented when I show you the lines with the T and the Y axis before. At the computer, after significant manipulation of the binary numbers, the data goes to the discrete to continuous converter. There, according to the type of discrete to continuous converter, an address will be assigned to those numbers. In general, the discrete to continuous converter will do so following one of two methods. One of this method is the zero order hold interpolation function, as you can see in this frame. Notice that the time domain is fixed and thus the line between the T's are the same size. Whereas the amplitude represented by the vertical lines, which I have just colored, vary in their distance from the base line. This variation corresponds to the different amplitudes at different times. The second method that a discrete to continuous converter uses to smooth the record is called linear interpolation. This achieves continuity by sending addresses to the screen that will connect a line between the Y values as you see in this frame, that is from one to the other, not as a straight lines. If we look at the enlargement of the EE segment I showed you before, and we compare it to the wave obtained by the two different methods of discrete to continuous converter representation, it is clear that the method used for EEG wave reconstruction is the zero order whole interpolation function. So the answer to this question is A. Next question. The larger the amplitude difference between two adjacent data points, the more the number of pixels occupied by pixels derived from the interposed function. A, true, 
be false. This is the same single derivation with an enlarged segment that I had shown you before. The tip of the arrow points to the data pixels. The pixels activated based on the data points gathered by the analog to digital converter. The segments in the parentheses correspond to the pixels activated by the interpose function of the discrete to continuous converter. The length of the line corresponds to the difference in amplitude between the two points collected by the analog to digital converter. So the answer to this question is true. Next question. In general terms, the maximum frequency faithfully represented by a computer screen is one half the number of pixels per second. A true, B false. A few minutes ago, when we spoke about analog to digital converters, we said that the minimum required sampling rate consists of the lowest sampling rate required to gather just enough data to allow us to reconstruct the fastest wave of interest without analyzing it and that theoretically this was achieved by following the Nyquist theorem but in reality it is achieved by utilizing the time 6 rule. Now I'd like to tell you about the maximum displayable frequency. The maximum displayable frequency refers to the maximum frequency that a screen monitor has the capacity to accurately display. The maximal displayable frequency is a function of pixel size. The smaller the pixel, the higher the maximal displayable frequency. The size of the pixels, as established by the native resolution of the screen, is determined by the manufacturer. And most neurophysiologists, if not all of us, use the Nyquist theorem to figure out the maximal displayable frequency and not the time 6 rule. In this and in subsequent frames I will show you the relation between pixels per second, pixel size and the maximal displayable frequency based on the Nyquist, the industry standard and also based on the time 6 rule. In a screen with 5 pixels per second the size of the pixel is 200 milliseconds. The maximal displayable frequency of such a screen is 2.5 Hz using Nyquist's number and 0.8 Hz using the time 6 rule. In a screen with 10 pixels per second, the size of the pixels are 100 milliseconds. The maximal displayable frequency of such a screen is 5 Hz using Nyquist's number and 1.6 Hz using the time 6 rule. In a screen with 50 pixels per second, the size of the pixels are 20 milliseconds. The maximal displayable frequency of such a screen is 25 Hz using Nyquist's number and 4.2 Hz using the time 6 rule. In a screen with 128 pixels per second, the size of the pixels are 12.8 milliseconds. The maximal displayable frequency of such a screen is 64 Hertz using Nyquist number and 21.3 Hertz using the time 6 rule. And in a screen with 200 pixels per second, the size of the pixels will be 5 milliseconds the maximal displayable frequency of such a screen is 100 Hz using Nyquist and 33.3 Hz using the time 6 rule. So, although the maximal displayable frequency could have been determined using either the Nyquist number, which is twice the highest frequency in a wave, or the time 6 rule, which is six times the highest frequency in a wave, the number used to determine the maximal displayable frequency was the Nyquist number. 
So for the rest of this talk, when we talk about maximal displayable frequency, we are going to be referring, unless so specified, to the maximal displayable frequency that results from using the Nyquist number. So the answer to this question is A. Next question. Each second of EEG displayed should contain at least dash pixels. A128, B200, C150, D500. The answer to this question is 128 pixels per second, which will give us a pixel size of 12.8 milliseconds and a maximal displayable frequency of 64 hertz. So the answer to this question is A. Next question. A 12 hertz rhythm recorded in a computer having 100 pixels per second will use dash pixel per wave. A8, B6, C14, D11. To answer this question, the only thing you need to do is to divide the number of pixels per second by the hertz of the rhythm. In this case, it results in 11 pixels per wave. So the answer to this question is D. Next question. How many pixels per second should a screen computer have to faithfully reproduce a rhythm made of waves of 20 milliseconds? That is using Nyquist theorem. A100, B200, C300, D400. A 20 millisecond wave corresponds to 50 hertz wave, which should be multiplied by 2 to determine the number of pixels needed for its representation. So the answer to this question is A. Next question. For routine visual inspection, each second of EEG display should occupy at least dash millimeters. A25, B30, C10, D2. In this frame, you can see an EEG epoch. The space between the thick green lines represents a second. A second should occupy at least 25 millimeters. This may vary based on time base used, but all computer displays should have the capability to display one second in 25 millimeters. So the answer to this question is A. Next question. A computer has a horizontal resolution of 1920 pixels and a vertical resolution of 1080 pixels, a screen border of 250 pixels on all sides and displays 50 seconds of EEG. How many pixels are devoted to display one second of EEG? A. 58 B. 95 C. 128 D. 32 The question is how many pixels are available to display one second of EEG. We know that the horizontal resolution is 1920 pixels. We know that the border pixels are 250 on each side. Border pixels refer to the pixels on all sides not used for EEG display, as you can see in this frame indicated by the arrows in all sides. We also know that the screen is displaying 15 seconds of EEG. 
How do we go about answering the question? First, we find out how many pixels are assigned for EEG display. To answer this question, we put in place all the relevant information we know. We start by adding up the bordered pixels on each side, resulting in 500 pixels. Then we subtract the 500 pixels from the total amount of horizontal pixels, yielding 1,420 pixels, which represent the number of pixels available for EEG display. The second question we need to answer or to ask ourselves is how many pixels are assigned to one second of EEG. This question has a very simple answer. It is calculated by taking the pixels assigned for EEG, 1420, and dividing it by the time allotted for EEG recording, 15 seconds. The result is 94.66, which can be rounded up to 95. So the answer to this question is B. Next question. A computer has a horizontal resolution of 1920 pixels and a vertical resolution of 1080 pixels. A screen border of 50 pixels on all sides and displays 15 seconds of EEG. How many pixels are devoted to display one second of EEG? A. 47.5 B. 97 C. 121 D. 32 The question is the same we asked before. How many pixels are available to display one second of EEG? But the numbers are different. We know that the horizontal resolution is 1920 pixels, that the border pixels add to 100, and that the screen display is 15 seconds of EEG. The first question is how many pixels are assigned for EEG display? This is calculated by subtracting the 100 border pixels from the total number of horizontal pixels, which result in 1,820 pixels. The second question is how many pixels are assigned to one second of EEG. We arrive to this number by dividing the number of pixels assigned for EEG by the number of seconds assigned for EEG. And the answer is 121. So the answer to this question is C. Next question. A computer has a horizontal resolution of 1024 pixels and a vertical resolution of 768 pixels, a screen border of 50 pixels on all sides, a display 10 seconds of EEG. How many pixels are devoted to display one second of EEG? A 132, B 86, C 92, D 128. The first question is how many pixels are assigned for EEG display? The border pixels are 100. The available pixels for EEG are 924. The second question is how many pixels are assigned to one second of EEG? The answer is easy, you know the drill by now. Just divide the pixels assigned for EEG 924 by the time allotted 
for EEG recording, 10 seconds. The result is 92.4, which can be rounded up to 92. So the answer to this question is C. Next question. A 27-inch computer screen has a horizontal resolution of 1920 pixels and a vertical resolution of 1080 pixels, a screen border of 250 pixels on all sides, and displays 10 seconds of EEG. What is the maximum frequency of EEG activity that can be displayed using Nyquist number? A. 47 Hz B. 500 Hz C. 96 Hz D. 109 Hz The question is, what is the maximum displayable frequency? To get to the answer, we will have to answer not two, but three questions. The first question we must answer is, how many pixels are assigned to EEG display? This is answered by adding the border pixels So 250 and 250 is 500 pixels. Subtracting the 500 pixels from the total amount of horizontal pixels, this will get us to 1,420 pixels, which I have placed inside the screen thus answering the question as to how many pixels for EEG. The second question is finding out how many pixels are assigned to one second of EEG. This is done by dividing the pixels assigned for EEG by the seconds assigned for EEG. The answer is 142. The third and unique question to this problem is to determine the maximum displayable frequency. For this we need to know the Nyquist theorem and applying it, which consists of dividing the number of pixels per second by 2. We execute this operation and it yields 71 Hertz. So the answer to this question is D. Next question. A 27-inch computer screen has a horizontal resolution of 1920 pixels, a vertical resolution of 1080 pixels, a screen border of 250 pixels on all sides, and displays 15 seconds of EEG. What is the diagonal resolution in pixels? A. 2,203 B. 1,166,400 and four, 400 pixels C. 4,852,800 and 800 D. 3,000 There is only one step to determine the pixels in the diagonal axis. We know that the computer screen from one lower corner on one side to the upper corner on the other side is 27 inches. We also know that the horizontal resolution is 1920 and the vertical resolution is 1080. We need to know the equation presented in this frame, which states that the total diagonal pixels are equal to the square root of the sum of the horizontal or with pixel squared added to the vertical or height pixel squared. The number are big, so I will calculate using the calculator. 
you can see the results. Now they are added and then the square root of that number is determined. So the number of diagonal pixels is 2202.9 which can be rounded to 2000 and 203. So the answer to this question is A. Next question. A 27 inch computer screen has a horizontal resolution of 1920 pixels and a vertical resolution of 1080 pixels. A screen border of 250 pixels on all sides and displays 15 seconds of EEG. How many pixels per inch are present in the screen? A, 40, B, 81.6, C, 99.3, D, 100. The question is how many pixels per inch are present on the computer screen? Answering it requires two steps. First, we need to find out how many pixels are present in the diagonal axis, something we have just done in the prior question. The second question, which is the fundamental question, is how many pixels per inch are present in the computer screen. In order to answer this question, we need to know another simple formula. That is that pixels per inch is determined by dividing the diagonal pixels by the diagonal inches. So the diagonal inches are 27 and the diagonal pixels are 2203. So the pixel per inch are 81.59. The answer to this question is B. Next question. The American Clinical Neurophysiology Society recommends a minimum of dash pixels resolution per vertical millimeter. A8, B4, C2, D10. In the 2008 guidelines, the number of pixels recommended were four pixels per millimeter. In the 2016, the number of pixels per millimeter was not mentioned. So remember, when you go to buy a computer screen to make sure that the screen has a minimum of four pixels resolution per vertical millimeter. There is an easy way to find out how many pixels per inch are present in a computer and therefore how many pixels per millimeter are present in the computer screen. Use Google to find the Omni calculator. It is free. Go to photo and video calculator section in the Omni group. Then find pixel per inch, which is one of the choices. At that point, you will see the screen that I'm showing you in this frame. Plug the diagonal screen size, then the vertical and horizontal pixels. They are in the specification information section of the manual of the computer. Once you have done this, the computer will do the rest. Then remember that the conversion value to go from inches to millimeters is 25.4. Divide pixels by millimeters the number will be close to 4. So we can round it up to 4 per 1 millimeter, which is the minimal standard that should be used to display EEG following the, the guidelines of the Clinical Neurophysiology Society. 
So the answer to this question is B. Next question. At a sensitivity of 1 microvolt per millimeter, a 226.9 microvolt wave will measure about 227 millimeters regardless of the equipment use. A. True. B. False. The specifications given in this question are set up in this frame. The sensitivity as the top strip legend is 1 microvolt per millimeter. The amplitude of the wave is 226.9 microvolts. The page cursor indicates that the amplitude of the vertical line is 20 microvolts. Notice that the size of the vertical line is 30 millimeters, not 20 millimeters as you would expect if the sensitivity were to be 1 microvolt per millimeter. Thus, each microvolt is 1.5 millimeter. So from the red marker to the blue marker, the distance is 340 millimeters. Thus, dividing this number by the amplitude of the wave, the results turn out to be 1.498, which corresponds to 1 microvolt for about 1.5 millimeter, which is more in tune with the page legend than with the sensitivity expressed on the top row. So the answer to this question is B. Next question. If one millimeter represents four microvolts, how many pixels are in this wave? A. 1361 B. 2368 C. 454 D. 542 Based on the computer specification, one millimeter represents four pixels and one microvolt represents 1.5 millimeter. This is despite the sensitivity legend present in the top row which says that one microvolt is equal to one millimeter. Notice the scale pointed by the arrow. So one microvolt is equal to six pixels. And a wave such as this one with 226.9 microvolts occupies at this sensitivity 1361.4 pixels. So the answer to this question is A. Next question. The space between channels should be equal or more than dash millimeters for display of up to 21 channels A10, B15, C20, D25. This frame represents an epoch. The distance between channels should be equal or more than 10 millimeters. So the answer to this question is A. Next question. Which of the following elements of the EEG machine contributes the most to distorting the brain wave generated electrical activity? A. Analog to digital converter. B. Mathematical high frequency filters. C. The computer screen. D. Single ended amplifiers. 
among the elements listed in this question, there are single-ended amplifiers. These amplifiers increase voltage. They deal with gain. The gain is the ratio of signal voltage obtained at the output of an amplifier to the signal applied at the input of the amplifier. The analog amplifiers used in most EG machines have a gain of 1 million or 120 dBs, which is the same thing, just set in a different way. Such an amplifier is able to turn an input of 10 microvolts into an output of 10 volts. They, they amplify, but they do not distort brain electrical activity. EEG analog to digital converter usually have sampling rates of 256 Hz, but some have the capacity to sample at a rate of 512 and an amplitude domain with 65,526 levels. Amplitude domain levels are at times referred to as quantization or voltage resolution. The time domain of the computer screen is about 100 pixels per second and the amplitude domain is usually about 1080 pixels. And Remember that each pixel can be thought of as a level. Thus, although in the future it is likely that the computer screens will improve and have a much higher resolution, or at least a resolution as good as smartphone at the time, they do not. So the answer to this question is C. Thank you very much for your attention.